Hey there YouTube, Far North Racing here. So at the end of the last episode we said we were going to pull the motor out and here it is, all torn down to the bare block. I didn't bother doing a video showing the process of removing the motor from the car because quite frankly there's all kinds of videos on the internet showing that. I didn't figure I had a lot to offer in that regard. But I do want to go through and talk about what we found now that we've torn the motor apart and as we're getting ready to do the rest of the rebuild. So here we have the block. So far it looks pretty good. It's still pretty dirty. You can see where oil was leaking down the side here. It's all covered in gunk. This is going to go to the machine shop to get hot tanked to clean it up and to magnaflux it to check for cracks. But on first inspection it doesn't look all that bad. The bores, when you run your fingers through here you can feel it. Your sense of touch is really sensitive and there's no scratches or dragging going on anywhere in these bores except for this one right here there's a scratch running vertically along here it's enough to catch a fingernail in so that's probably going to have to get bored out to check for sure we're going to measure the diameter of the bores and we're going to measure the taper of the bores just to see what sort of shape it is and so we can size the pistons we have to order but my dial bore gauge uh, isn't here yet, so we'll save that for a later video. That's about all there is to say for the block at this point. Let's have a look at the main girdle and the mains. So here we have the main girdle comprising of the main caps here and this structure here which ties it all together. And you want to see the difference between an engine from the 1950s, like the small block Chevy that I cut my teeth on like pretty much every other hot rodder of my generation, and something a little more modern. Uh, this is it. This is really something amazing. In a small block Chevy, these main bearing caps are standalone pieces of steel. So you have the four bolts that bolt it to the block, and then this arch which holds the bearing is a separate piece. So you get four separate pieces or eight separate pieces because of the V8. Here, they've gone ahead and tied the whole thing into one giant casting, or maybe even a forging because the parting line is, is kind of broad. So that this way, all these caps are tied together in a single assembly, which makes the whole bottom end way more rigid. You don't have any flexing going on between the webs and the block. That's amazing. This is something, to get this kind of structure in a small block Chevy, you have to buy aftermarket main caps that are made out of billet steel usually, and there's a separate girdle that bolts down on top of the mains to tie the whole thing together. It's an investment of a couple of hundred to a thousand dollars. And here you get it straight out of the factory. That's really something. Anyway, what we're really concerned about here is the bearings themselves. So these are the supports for the crankshaft when it's spinning, it rotates in this space. These bearings are made out of a soft material overlaid on top of steel. And the idea is that anything that gets run through the oiling system, any junk or trash, will embed itself in the soft metal in the bearings instead of scratching up the hard metal on the crank. Bearings are way cheaper than crankshafts. And when we look at these, they're not that bad. Usually these things are made out of a three layer, like a lead or a soft babbit material over top of a copper layer, over top of a steel layer. So if the bearings are getting worn out, what you'll see is copper color. You'll see a burned away area where the copper shows through. And I don't see any of that on any of these bearings. These bearings actually look very new almost. The one exception is you'll see there's a bunch of big scratches and gouges in here in a couple of spots. This tells me that some trash has circulated through the oiling system and that the bearing did its job and embedded the material inside of it instead of having it scratch up the crank too badly. That has me a little concerned about the turbocharger because the same oil that goes through these bearings is the same oil that goes through the turbochargers. But uh, we'll have a look at that in more detail once I do some tests on the turbo. Overall, not great, but could be way, way worse. So here we have the crank. The journals all look reasonable. I mean, there's a little bit of slight marking on here. You can tell that something went through the oiling system. There's a few little scratches here and there. A little bit there. But they're not bad. Barely, not quite catch a fingernail there. You can feel them, but it's not really catching. 
so I suspect those will polish right out. This is going to go to the machine shop right away so they can magna flux it to check for cracks and tell me if it's polishable and if it is they'll go ahead and polish it so that'll take care of that. So here's one of those occasional surprises you get when you pull the motor out. What we've got here is somebody else's identification marks. You'll see there's one, two, three, four dots there, one, two, three dots there. When I had this thing in the motor, I punched it myself on top of the rod pad. So this one here was in position three, and this one here was in position four. And you can see that the caps agree. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So the caps were in the right spot, but it looks like the rods weren't. We got four here and three here. We've got three here and four here. So somebody has had this motor apart before me, and when they did, they mixed up the position of the rods and the rod caps. But I'm going to have to talk to the machinist and explain that to him and see if it's worthwhile swapping the caps back and rehoning it or vice versa. The other interesting thing out of this is that may explain why one of these pistons looks so much newer. It may have been that the whole rod and piston has been changed out. So here's another surprise. This here is just a magnet. The typical mechanic, uh, I drop something and got to pick it up magnet. On the end is a bunch of flakes of metal that came out of the oil pan. They were stuck on the end of the oil pickup and they were just underneath it on the oil pan itself. And you can see that they're ferrous because they stick to the magnet. See? Magnet. <coughs> and they're thin and flaky. So I'm not sure what that is. That could be bearing material, maybe, if it's got some sort of steel backing to it. But it also might be something out of the head. I'm going to have to pay careful attention to the head teardown to see if that's flakes wearing off of a tappet or off the top of a valve stem or something like that. So there you go. That's the short block torn down. Uh, our next step is to get some machining done to the block, some machining done to the crank, make up our mind about pistons and rods, get those ordered, and start making some decisions about how we're going to reassemble it. Uh, I don't have enough cash on hand to be able to do the whole thing all at once, so we're going to do this in stages. So uh, I'm going to plug away at this and get the short block done. The next step is to tear down the heads. So we got this cool stainless steel food services table that I bought on Amazon. That's my teardown area with the uh, block off to the machinist, the crank off to the machinist. I'm going to tear, start tearing down the heads and see uh, what we can't find in there. All right, thanks for watching. Stop it now.